So the World Cup is bearing down upon us. Are you ready, Ree? Let's take a look at the last 17 seasons of players relegated from the Premier League, but who also lit up the World Cup. 2001, Paolo Wanchop, Manchester City. Paolo Wanchop is a player you probably chose to forget about years ago, and fair enough considering the man hasn't been seen on British shores in about 15 years. Relegated in 2001 with Manchester City. Yes, kids, this is what happens when you don't have an oil rig backing you up. The Costa Rican played at both the 2002 and the 2006 World Cups. At the second one, he scored twice in the opening game against Germany. Let's just ignore the fact his goalkeeper could see the four, and became the first Costa Rican to net a brace at a World Cup. 2002, Matt Holland, Ipswich Town. It can't be easy when your inspirational captain, Lee, and arguably greatest player of the modern era storms out of Southeast Asia on the eve of the World Cup or to get sent home after calling his manager well I won't repeat it but it's where babies come from but Matt Holland stepped up to the plate fired home against Cameroon in the Republic of Ireland's opening game and certainly filled the gaping hole left by Roy Keane as the Irish reached the round of 16 bowing out on penalties to Spain Holland the man with the Dutch surname and the Faulty Towers voice had just been relegated the previous month with Ipswich Town 2003 Tory Underflow Sunderland Claudio Arena might feel hard done by not to make the cut considering he was named in the 2002 team in the tournament. Then again, so was El Jov and last catch up were number one on the charts. 2002 was a strange year, lads. We'll give it to Tori Anderflo purely for the fact that he managed to score against Brazil in a 2 1 win for Norway that helped him qualify for the second round of the 1998 World Cup. Norwegian legend, pretty much for that goal alone. 2004, Henri Camara Wolves. Another obscure Premier League footballer from the early 2000s and another fellow who was actually relegated two years running, which probably made him start questioning whether he was the problem. Relegated with Wolves in 2004, the Senegalese had been a star at the World Cup two years earlier, scoring two goals, including a golden goal winner against Sweden in the last 16, taking his country to the quarterfinals for the first time in their history, which earned himself a blockbuster move to fulfill a boyhood dream of playing alongside Kenny Miller. 2005, Peter Crouch, Southampton. Admittedly, I am slightly reaching with Peter Crouch on this one. Relegated 2005 with Southampton, in the space of two years, he went from Aston Villa bench warmer to England goal scorer at a World Cup. England were on course to record an embarrassing nil all draw against Trinidad and Tobago before Crouch popped up with 10 minutes to go, yanked on Brent Sancho's dreadlocks to power home a header. I'm sure the country breathed a collective sigh of relief. Did not stop the party in Trinidad though. Believe me, I know, I was there. 2006, Junichi Inamoto, West Brom. Junichi Inamoto, the Japanese David Beckham. Yes, we all remember Inamoto as nothing more than an average midfielder who was passed around British clubs like an unwanted paper towel for a few years, but the Japanese playmaker lit up the 2002 World Cup, scoring two at the tournament. Considering Arsenal had just released him weeks prior to the World Cup, I can only imagine the Gunners fans were pulling their hair out at having carelessly tossed away such a top talent. Yeah, don't worry lads, he was relegated with a whimper four years later, West Brom. 2007, Dennis Romadel, Charlton Athletic. For a man who relied primarily on speed, to amass 126 caps for his country is quite something. Dennis Romadel was a star for Denmark at the 2002 World Cup, playing all four games of the tournament, and he even scored in a 2-0 win against defending champions France, as the Danes reached the second round. He wasn't so lucky at Charlton. Alan Party who came in to save the day midway through the 06-07 season and, well, you can guess what happened. 2008, Richard Kingston, Birmingham City. Birmingham City fans have probably forgotten that Richard Kingston was even at their club, to be honest. Their backup goalie only ever played once for them in the league during the relegation campaign of 07-08. His only season at the club before he went off to barely register at Wigan and Blackpool. So ignored in England, it was a bit of a surprise to see him do so well at the 2010 World Cup. Mr. 90 Caps for Ghana excelled as the Black Stars came within a Luis Suarez handball, believe me Richard, I know the feeling, of a World Cup semi-final. 2009, Michael Owen, Newcastle. This just goes to show how far Michael Owen had fallen in such a short space of time. In 1998, Owen was the hottest property in world football after scorching through Argentina's defence to fire home one of the most memorable World Cup strikes in living memory. Four years later, he was at it again, scoring against Brazil this time, and then it all fell apart at his next and final one, laying crumpled on the turf after playing 51 seconds against Sweden, as Freddy Shepard desperately rummaged through his fighting cabinet for any sort of receipt Real Madrid might have given him. Three years later, he was languishing around the pitch as Newcastle slipped out of the top flight. 2010, Kevin Prince Boateng, Portsmouth. I'm still not sure what Kevin Prince Boateng was doing in that cash trap Portsmouth team that sank like a stone during the 09-10 campaign. Considering it was only a few weeks before he exploded into life at the World Cup, not only did he get to play against his brother at the tournament, but he also scored a memorable winner against the United States to take Ghana into the quarterfinals. Let's just not talk about the 2014 World Cup where he was sent home after allegedly abusing his manager. But then I suppose if they didn't have the right gear. 2011, Winston Reid, West Ham. You don't I don't know how much I wanted to put in Robbie Keane here, but I should probably refrain from putting in the entire Ireland team from that World Cup. I'll go for Winston Reid, who wrote a nice little piece of football history in 2010, when he scored a last minute equaliser for New Zealand against Slovakia, earning his country their first ever point in a World Cup match. Not a bad little story, considering up until a month before the tournament started, his own manager had never even seen him play. He got himself a move to West Ham off the back of that, and was subsequently relegated. 2012, Yakubu Blackburn Rovers. Okay, the 11-12 season just didn't have World Cup heroes, alright? I'm well aware that Yakubu didn't really do anything at the 2010 World Cup. He scored a penalty and Nigeria were still eliminated 
in the group stages, but lads, there was nobody else. Who was I going to put in? Chris Eagles? So that was number 13, Park Ji Sung, QPR. Now we're talking the most successful Asian footballer of all time, although relegated with QPR in 2013. Park Ji Sung was part of the South Korean side that finished fourth at the 2002 World Cup, and he also played at the next two tournaments, capping his country in 2010. He also scored in all three World Cups, the first South Korean and second Asian player to do so. He's also Asia's joint all time leading goal scorer of the World Cup, alongside the likes of Tim Cahill. Yes, I have a hard time accepting Tim Cahill as Asian too, especially considering a name like that wouldn't look out of place in West Cork. So that was number 14, Clint Dempsey Fulham. Remember that goal Clint Dempsey scored in 2010 where Rob Green tried to stop the slow motion shot by hugging the ball to death? Dempsey relegated in 2014 with Fulham, scored against Ghana at the 2006 World Cup, England at the 2010 World Cup, and Ghana again in 2014. As captain, after 29 seconds, fifth fastest goal in World Cup history. He scored his fourth World Cup goal against Portugal. 2015, Mauricio Isla, QPR. Our first fullback to make the list, Mauricio Isla was a star for Chile at both the 2010, but in particular, the 2014 World Cups. Too bad the right backs stank up the place at QPR, sailing out of the division in 2015. 2016, Tim Kroll, Newcastle. Okay, so Tim Kroll didn't do much at the 2014 World Cup, which is just as well, considering he didn't do very much when Newcastle got relegated in 2016 either. With Jasper Sillison preferred, Kroll was finally released from the wild for the penalty shootout, nothing more, just the penalties, against Costa Rica in a 2014 World Cup shootout for the Dutch. Good job they won, or Louis van Gaal would have looked like even more of a raving lunatic. 2017, Stephen Pienaar, Sunderland. Jermaine Defoe did cross my mind here, purely for his winning strike against Slovenia eight years ago, but Stephen Pienaar, relegated last year with Sunderland, played in the 2002 World Cup and then 8 years later captain South Africa on home soil including to a 2-1 win over France oh and considering how the French got to that tournament we enjoyed that one Stephen by God, did we enjoy that one thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe